So, Mark, here we are, night after the BAFTAs. We're in BAFTA HQ. Yes. Um, what is it about BAFTA that makes it so special in significance to, to other organisations and bodies? Well, I think, you know, if you look at the turnout last night, and bear in mind, last night was really proper cold. I mean, it was, there was a fantastically, you know, glittery red carpet. These were people who were braving wind and rain, and let's be honest about this, sleet. I mean... And they were there, and they wanted to be there because it's important. Now, if you look back a decade ago, that kind of international prominence was something that BAFTA didn't necessarily have. And obviously being moved in the awards calendar to coming before the Oscars was very significant. I would argue that actually the eBAFTAs now have pretty much usurped the Golden Globes in the run-up to the Oscars. But it's also important to see them as an awards ceremony in their own right. You know, we should be proud of them for being the British Academy Awards, not just as part of some, you know, race up towards the Oscars. So... Obviously, the world press has, has been comparing and contrasting the two because this year the nominations were 24 hours apart. You know, we had the BAFTA nominations here and then the next day they had the Oscar nominations. And clearly people are looking at the way things have fallen as far as the BAFTAs are concerned as an indication of what's going to happen at the Oscars. But they are distinctive awards. They are, you know, they have a British flavour to them. It doesn't mean they favour British products, but they are, you know, the British Academy Awards. And I think we should be proud of how much the rest of the world seems to be interested in them. I think as well that, that the, the heart of what BAFTA is, is about film and the passion for film and celebrating film, oh, actually, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And I mean, there is a real celebration. There was a, there was a, a wonderful moment uh, last night in the, the Royal Opera House when they had the Outstanding British Film category, which was the first award to be announced. And this was a, a, a very, very hotly contested category. You had you know, Les Miserables was in there, which of course was leading the pack in terms of nominations, and it was up against Skyfall. Now, traditionally, Bond movies are not thought of as being, you know, awards fodder. And when Skyfall won, you could, you could feel the room going, yes, absolutely, that's completely right. And Sam Mendes got up and did a lovely and gracious speech in which he was looking back to the history of Bond and, you know, the roots with Ian Fleming and then looking forward to the future of Bond. And you thought, this is exactly right. This is a celebration of Bond. How wonderful that it happened on the 50th anniversary. Terrific that you had somebody like Sam Mendes right at the helm of that. And, you know, making it a character-driven story, a story that, you know, in which you're following characters and plot, in which spectacle and all the rest is important, but it's not driving the narrative. The narrative itself is what's important. So, I, you know, I did think of it as a you know, celebration of filmmaking talent, and it started on exactly the right note with Skyfall. Well, it's interesting that you touched upon those awards, first of all, because, you, you know, what you see with Les Mis um, as well, um, uh, um, uh, seven Psychopaths. You've got you've got this plethora of British-made films that are all big budgets. So yeah. it kind of says something as well for the state of the British film industry and how strong actually it is. You know, it's a funny thing with the, the press. There's only ever two stories that you hear about the British film industry. One of them is King's Speech wins an Oscar, therefore the Brits are coming. The other one is UK Film Council closes down. It's it's the end of the world. In fact, as anyone who works in the British film industry knows, the narrative is completely different to that. The British film industry is thriving. British technicians, actors, writers, directors, you know, are working in international cinema. And every now and then you get a film which looks distinctively British. But judging the success of the British film industry just on things that are obviously British, when in fact British talent is successful throughout international cinema. The British film industry is thriving. It's just that's not necessarily the, the greatest news story. You know, newspapers like a good, simple headline. You look at what happened yesterday. It's clear that the British film industry is in a terrific state and it's clear that, you know, people come from all over the world and they respect that and, they, you know, and they're impressed by it. And the shining example of that, obviously, is Juno Temple, yeah, who, who won uh, Best Rising Star. I mean, it's fantastic stuff, isn't it, really? Yeah, the E Rising Star Award is very interesting because it's voted for by the public. And, you know, as a critic, you can say, well, I think this actor is talented, I think this film is good. You can't tell anybody whether someone's a star, only the public can do that. I was lucky enough to be involved in the, the group that selected the shortlist, you know, the five nominees. And I think it was a fantastic shortlist. I think any single one of them would have deserved to win. You know, Elizabeth Olsen, who was there last night, who was so great in Martha Marcy May Marlene, Andrea Riseborough, who's got an extraordinary career both on stage and on television and, you know, and on screen. Suraj Sharma, who appeared, you know, basically from nowhere. I mean, that was, it was really, really extraordinary. They managed to carry that film so well. And it just, you know, turned up absolutely out of nowhere. Juno Temple, who, you know, has done such great work. 
She's worked with William Friedkin. She's worked with Matthew McConaughey. She's done, you know, very differing and diverse range of films. And every single one of them has real, genuine, you know, quality to it. And when she got up last night, and one, you know, you could, you could feel it was the right decision. Everyone was really pleased. And the lovely thing about her acceptance speech was she was just the right mixture of confident but slightly overawed. And I love the fact that she was, you know, she was genuinely sort of slightly taken aback by her own success. You know, I, I thought that was, that, was a, that was really, really good. That was a, it was a very sweet moment, actually, wasn't it? And you've, what, what was interesting, again, about this award is that it's, it's, it's inc that includes industry because it's people like yourselves that are nominating these people in the first place and then the general public that are also um, <coughs> contributing as well. So there's a co collaboration, isn't there, within this award? Yeah, and I mean, as I said, the, 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 the interesting thing is that in the end it goes to a public vote and you can never, you know, you can never second guess the public. If you look back at the Rising Star winners over the years since I think the first winner was James McAvoy, it's been a very, very interesting batch. And I remember James McAvoy being so thrilled when he won the Rising Star Award that he, he, he had the statuette with him and he wouldn't let go of it and he took it to dinner because there's a dinner after the BAFTAs. And um, he literally wouldn't let go of his own table. Then of course he went off to, to this, there was a, a party and he put it on the floor, he danced around it and broke it. He broke it in half, first, first everyone he broke it. Ever since then they've made them stronger, you know, in the knowledge that that was gonna happen. <laughs> and well, um the other thing that I think people get sort of confused about when it comes to the Rising Star Award, it isn't a, the best newcomer award. These are people no. that are being acknowledged, aren't they, for their work that they've already contributed and, and they're an exciting talent to, to see where their future goes. Yeah, I mean, the whole point about it was it was never intended solely as a, you know, as something that, 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 was, a, that was a newcomer award. I mean, there have been cases in which we've had... Uh, an actor or an actress who has literally got one performance under their belt. I mean, Suresh Sharma is a very good example of that. As I said, up against Andrea Riseborough, who's got this extraordinary body of work, you know, already very, very well established. But generally, what the award was, was trying to do was to recognise people who are already respected within the industry, but are just on that cusp of stardom. And that's why I say, you know, you look at Juno Temple, you look at the work she's done, she, it feels like her moment has arrived. You look at Suresh Sharma, somebody who, you know, I mean, Ang Lee said it was, you know, it was a gift. It was a gift. I think Suresh Sharma actually got that gig because he turned up with his brother and ended up getting that role. Then you have, you know, Andrea Riseborough, who's got this, you know, this extraordinary body of work uh, under her belt. You've got Elizabeth Olsen, who, you know, is very, very well respected and has done some extraordinary... I, mean, I think Martha Marcy May Marlene was, you know, was a, a, a really standout piece of work. It was something that, you know, that was just extraordinary. And then, of course, you've got Alicia Vikander, who was in, actually, my joint favourite film of the year, which is A Royal Affair. And I remember seeing A Royal Affair. I'd seen the poster for it, and I thought it looked like some kind of, you know, period costume drama. I love Mass Mickelson. I didn't know anything about the story. I, I mean, it, it, apparently it's a very well-known story in Europe. I didn't know anything about it at all. And I was just blown away by this drama. And at the center of it is, you know, Alicia Vikander, who does such a good job. It's an extraordinary performance as, you know, somebody who arrives in this situation when they're young and could therefore be thought of as somehow inexperienced, but in fact, she's intelligent and erudite and she very much drives the drama and she holds her own against Mass Mickelson, who is an incredible screen presence. And of course, we saw her this year in Anna Karenina. And, you know, she's, she has a facility with languages and with accents, and I tell you, she is a rising star, you know. And I think every single one of those five nominees has got a great career ahead of them. Any single one of them would have been a worthy winner. Juno Temple, it was great because, you know, it just felt like her moment had arrived. And another big winner last night was um, Ben Affleck, of course, yeah, with Argo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three awards he went away with. What, what were your sort of feelings on Argo? Well, I mean, I like Argo very much. It was interesting that before we went into the awards, all the bookies had said, OK, it's going to be Argo and Ben Affleck because of what had happened with the previous awards ceremonies. Of course, the, you know, as you know, the main narrative with this is that Ben Affleck was overlooked for a Best uh, Director nomination at the Oscars. And, of course, he's, he's won so many accolades now. It's very peculiar going forward to the Oscars when he's not in the running for Best Director. When the nominations happened, everyone went, oh, that's it. Well, if he hasn't been nominated for Best Director, Argo ain't going to win Best Film, is it? Well, of course, actually, all the betting is saying it now is. And last night he said this, you know, he had made a lovely speech in which he said it's like he's been given a second act. 
and that was lovely. It was very nice. It was very self-deprecating yeah. because it was kind of like him saying, "Look, you know, I remember the Benefer period. I remember, you know, Gigli and uh, you know Jersey Girl, and having the good <laughs> grace to you know to kind of acknowledge it because, of course." He's, you know, he's won awards in the past for his screenwriting. It's not like this is the first thing he's done behind the camera. He's directed three feature films and he has won significant awards for writing. So it was, it was just very nice that he was, you know, he was very self-effacing. I mean, I interviewed him about the film as I think did every other film journalist and he was intelligent and smart and engaged. And of course he said that as far as he was concerned, his filmmaking mentor was George Clooney. And you'll remember that if you look back at the history of the BAFTAs, when David Putnam was on stage a few years ago, he said that George Clooney was making the kind of films that he thought you couldn't make in Hollywood anymore. Films that were based on an idea, that were intelligent, that had something to say, that weren't just great big action spectaculars, they were about something. Of course, the other thing that was lovely last night was Sir Alan Parker, because, you know, when they had this little show reel of his films, I mean, I'm a fan of Alan Parker's anyway, but you go, oh, he did that, and he did that, and he did that. I've forgotten he did that. You know, it's such an extraordinary body of work. And, and he was, again, he was very self-effacing. He told this lovely story about, you know, organizing a kind of playground fight. And he said, I didn't, I didn't say action, but I pretty nearly did. And then his headmaster saying, well, why? Why did you do it? And he said, well, if I could have shown him this, holding the battery, he said, this would have proved what it was all about. And, and foreign language film, I thought, was really mm. strong um, last night, too, yeah. with, a, with a more um, picking up a few awards. Do you think that's great as well to, to acknowledge it? Because the thing is, with foreign language films, there's such originality and, yes. and imagination, isn't there? Yeah, there really is. And I mean, yeah, I, it was a very hard category this year because Amour has got so much uh, going for it. I mean, obviously, you know, Emmanuel Riva won in the Best Actress category, which I think was, you know, a slight surprise, although actually a, a pretty good surprise. Often, when an award is called, you get those cutaway shots to the people that didn't win, doing that smiling through the tears, you know. But actually, I genuinely think that everyone in the room thought, oh, well, if I'm going to lose to anyone, that's fine. Because, of course, you know, she was nominated decades ago for Hiroshima Mon Amour. And Amour is such a moving film. I think it's actually, ironically, it's an uplifting film. People have talked about it as being very depressing because it's about the end of life. It's about, you know, where we're all going in the end. But I think it's a very, very honest and affecting portrait of love. And at the centre of it, these two great performances, and she is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, and great to see it winning at the BAFTAs. And I, I think that's been recognised at all the awards ceremonies. It's a really significant film. And did you find it interesting as well, as a documentarian yourself, that uh, for the debut um, feature, or outstanding debut, I should say, that a documentary got that award well, as I mean, well. Well, I mean, I'm not a documentarian. I make film documentaries, which is a slightly, you know, slightly different thing, you know. And I'm not a director. I'm a, you know, I'm a film journalist. I work with filmmakers who make documentaries. I would never presume to call myself a documentarian because documentary filmmaking is really, really, you know, it's, it's a tough subject. And it is interesting how many real-life stories were, you know, on offer in the awards uh, last night, whether it's fictionalised versions of them or whether it's documentaries. I mean, Searching for Sugar Man is an extraordinary piece of work. McCullen is an extraordinary piece of work. Imposter is, a, you know, an absolutely baffling story that you keep going, really? Really? And actually, that was one of the themes of last night. Truth is stranger than fiction. That's very, very true. And if, was there any disappointments th that you wish that maybe somebody had got acknowledged that, that didn't? Well, frankly, I would love to have seen Sam Mendes uh, nominated for Best Director because I think he deserved it. But overall, what you got was a very interesting spread and the awards panning out amongst a number of films. Sometimes you get an award ceremony in which one film just barrels through and wins everything, and it becomes a bit boring. Last night was lovely because it was, you know, it was so spread around. With the exception of Zero Dark Thirty, pretty much everything, every significant entry won something. Is there is a specific highlight of the whole BAFTA uh, event, not just the event, but your, your participation in it that you'll take with you, a lasting memory? Well, you know, I loved being involved in the selection process for the, for the, the EE Rising Star. It was a real privilege because you're in a room with filmmakers, you know, producers, casting directors, journalists, you know, a group of people. And we had a short list, well, a long list of about 25 names. And we had what we were all referring to as a full and frank exchange of ideas. You know, two hours of full and frank discussing, which was great. And then at the end of it, we did a blind vote. So we didn't know who the nominees were until the nominations were announced. Exciting, actually. It was great. And then when the nominations were announced, I went, yes, great. Oh, yeah, fabulous. And I really think that that was a, a really good list. And I think it was the result of a, you know, a good 
proper engaged discussion. So that, and the other thing I'll take away from it is Sam Mendes, you know, on stage, holding the BAFTA, thinking 50 years, you know, now Bond is taken seriously at the awards ceremonies. That's fantastic, Mark. Thank Good. you very Thanks much. Thanks very much. Thank you.